Hey, welcome back. Let's talk about webinars. So why webinars? They have many important and powerful functions in any marketing effort. A fairly recent survey from Quicksprout found that just over 60% of content marketers are incorporating webinars into their marketing strategies, at least occasionally. In essence, a webinar is great for the modern marketer because they're convenient and they establish credibility. Webinars have huge applications on training and education, they create brand awareness, and they have impressive consumer reach. The first component of an effective webinar is attraction. This component serves to plan and attract people to your webinar and helps increase conversions. When using the attraction factor, the first thing you should do is profile your audience who suit your topic and value delivery by identifying which industry, market, or type of viewer will benefit from this topic before delivering your content. Using profiling works because it narrows down your audience to the most ideal ones who will benefit from your webinar content. The second element you can use is to reach out to people with social media posts. This means connecting with your audience via Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, whatever. Being social with your prospective viewers is the best thing you can do to increase viewership and engagement. This depends on the amount of social media sites that you utilize for your business. The one with the most engagements should be your main focus. The next thing to consider is the placement of webinar ads on your website. Should you put it right on your homepage or as a sidebar inviting them to join? The answer I recommend is both. Most split testing conducted by various market analysts determined that both ways convert well and each has no advantage or edge over the other. Now let's look at the placement of your webinar ads on your blog site. This section explores placing ads before the comment option versus the placement within the blog content itself. So which ones convert better? The result is ads that are placed above the fold generate more clicks compared to placing ads in the comment option or within the blog content. So if you want to direct more people to watch your webinar, do this. Timing is also important. The question is, when do you send invitations and reminders for your webinars? Do I make people register and attend the webinar within the next hour, or do I send out invitations a few days before and send out regular reminders? In this test, I found out that scheduling a webinar within days is the best approach compared to scheduling a webinar within the next hour, as it provides ample time for your audience to prepare. As for reminders, sending them out to attendees will increase your webinar attendance by up to 70% as there will be people who did not recall having registered. So in this part, let's explore the content of your webinar. I'll focus on the components that provide details and information of your webinar. So how do you ensure your webinar titles look, feel, and sound good? Is there a formula available that can achieve this for you? Or do you just run and gun, type something, and hope it'll work? It turns out there's actually a formula to do this. I've tested this formula for a title, and here are some examples. On slide, how your target can enjoy this benefit by method of achieving the benefit, even if common objection. So title number one, how millennials can still succeed in online marketing despite worsening economy. Title number two, how you can increase your business exposure with SEO and edge out the competition. And here's the result. Using this formula allows you to use best keywords for a more effective title compared to just coming up with one off the top of your head. The reason is self-explanatory. The title answers the what's in it for me question, gives one method to deliver the benefit and addresses the obstacles which the webinar will help overcome. In your webinar, sometimes you'll need to have visual cues to direct your viewers to act on something like clicking on a button for a new lesson or simply clicking the like button. So should you do it? If you do, kudos, you've just added another element that increases your conversion. This is because a visual cue will help people understand or assist them in doing something, enriching the overall value they've received from attending your webinar. Another hack you can include in your webinar is adding open-ended questions that build discussions among your viewers. However, this really depends on the number of viewers. If your webinar has small viewership, then a viable option is you can ask a question every five to 10 minutes. Though keep this in mind, it can sometimes be time consuming, especially for larger audiences. For a large viewership, a dedicated Q&A session is best. This is so you can have more control over the questions and can limit the questions that you answer. Sometimes you can also drop a question between segments. This helps viewers stay on track and keeps their participation level high. Webinars work similar to conversations. The last thing you want to express in your webinar is just a robot voice droning out all of your information without any kind of feedback or conversation. So it's a wise move to build an intellectual and emotional connection with your audience in the webinar session. 
One excellent and proven way is using emotion. A sparing usage of emotion works because your viewers can relate more with the lessons you share. Emotions also help build authority and confidence among your viewers. On the other hand, I advise against using too much emotion in your webinars as this can interrupt the lesson and make you look a little unprofessional. An ideal way to end your webinar is by making a space for your viewers to decide. This is achieved with a call to action or CTA. Your goal at this point is to entice your audience to take action, usually to buy something or subscribe to your product. The recommended method is to include a CTA. This is because, much like a sales letter, you've sold the dream and fulfilled the what's in it for me question. Now is the perfect moment to compel your audience to take action. CTAs work because they give more opportunities for your funnel and future promotions instead of just leaving them on the table or leaving your audience wondering what they should do. So what do you do to make your viewers stay? One highly effective tactic you can use here is to offer a bonus right after the webinar session ends to get people to stay with you until the end of the session. It can be a free download or extra training, something that just adds some value. A study found that bonuses increase viewership by up to 60 to 70% because more viewers will take action at the CTA and it creates a valuable opportunity for future business deals. Bonuses can be your way of saying thanks for them staying until the end. This increases the sense of value your viewers get and builds your reputation and trust. Your viewers like variety in your webinar. What you can do is develop a variety of slide formats to maintain their interest. And it works. Having a variety of points, graphs, quotes, or even just a simple picture is a great way to keep the visual and mental direction of your webinar interesting. The inclusion of graphical cues also keeps your viewers engaged longer. Now follow up, nurture, and ascend. These three words have great importance for the future of your business, and it applies to your webinars too. What should you do after they've ended? Do you just say goodbye or take this opportunity to engage your audience further? After your webinar has ended, you should include ways to further the relationship. A survey right after the webinar is a great tool to gauge what your audience wants from you next. In surveys, I found that open-ended questions work best because it gives a place for your viewers to give their opinions or feedback. This opens new opportunities for you to explore the possibilities and improve your future webinar sessions. However, you can also include closed-ended questions like ratings or yes or no questions to generate measurable data from your audience. Another great method to build trust and boost conversion is to send a series of follow-up emails with valuable information. By doing this, you'll send a message to your audience that you care for them, you'd like to keep in touch, and you imply to your audience that they matter to you.